Well, good evening, Northern Michigan. Welcome to playoff time in hometown highlights. Pre-district time here in Northern Michigan as we kick off our hometown highlights postseason coverage. And we start tonight in Boyne City. And no, it's not October 18th. It's actually November 1st. The Ramblers are hosting Elk Rapids yet again, as they did two weeks ago. This time, conference championship isn't potentially up for grabs, but the chance at a state title sits just five wins away for either team. Two leaders out despite the rain. Great attendance this evening. Our Northern Michigan fans are one and only diehards supporting their squad. Jordan Wilmot in a QB for Corey Redman tonight. Throws an interception early. I knew this one was a costly pick. Cole Douglas, number 19. He goes all over the field, zigzag, back and forth, behind, trips up some players, but uh, he gets to that far pile on there. That means it's a 6 nothing Elk Rapids lead after the 56-yard return. Wilmot again throws. Douglas again receives. Maybe these two guys work out together in the offseason. I don't know, but either way, that's the connection that happened early for the Elks. Bramble offense finally gets going. Wilmot finds Bradley Fouché along the sideline. A few plays later, Malik Smith punches it in. We're all tied at 6 at this point in the second quarter, that offense keeps on churning. Maceo Roman, always good for a highlight or two, or maybe ten like his number. This will time he gets brought down to the five, takes a brutal hit on the sidelines. Smith again in for the score. Boyne City goes up 13 to six, and they pad it from there. 27 to six, the Ramblers are moving on to the district final. St. Angus always known to make a run in the postseason. The Saints have made the state semifinals the last two seasons, but it's been a while since they entered the postseason with a loss. Let's see how they look tonight after last week's beat down in Sheboygan. Hosting Hillman tonight. Band fired up as always, not wasting any time in this one. First play from scrimmage. Gage Kresge takes it left, turns on the Jets, and no one is going to catch number one. He's off to the races for a 70-yard TD score. Saints up early, and they would get it right back. Tyler Snyder finds Kresge again. He comes up short of the end zone this time, but James Kreiderman punches it in for the score. And they're not done. This just their fourth play from scrimmage. Brandon Oja gets the rock, and he's gone. 55 yards for the score, and the Saints just piling it on early and often in this one. Hillman could not get it going in the first half, and the Saints, they would take advantage. Kreiderman, again, would get the handoff, and he's just going to make it look easy from here. The Saints, they would score four touchdowns in the first six minutes of the ball so what game. So you're saying it was good to have a Saint on your fantasy team. Exactly, exactly. And they would go on to win this one big, 60-19, the final at home. 9-0 Cadillac starting off the playoffs with Chippewa Hills. We're going to pick things up late in the fourth quarter. Vikings with it. It's third down. Jalen Brooks looking to get something going, and he just takes off for the score. This kid's been doing it all year. Speaking Hometown of highlight, players. regular fantasy draft. He's your number one quarterback in northern Michigan. It's 35 zip at that point. Chip Hills back with it, and the throw is picked off by Aaron Wilkinson. And that would pretty much seal the deal. The Vikings, they would go on to win this one. 36 to nothing. They're 10-0 on the year, and they're looking for more in the postseason. That's right. That's a dangerous squad out of the Big North. They'll host another playoff game next week, too. Welcome back to our pre-district edition of Hometown Highlights. We move on now to Reed City. Well, where do we start with Reed City? The Coyotes just completed their third straight 9-0 season and another Central State Conference title. Tonight, a good challenge for the pre-district against a tough Claire Pioneer team. Or so we thought, Reed City pretty much dominates these highlights. Paris Jones is the young man you see here, and Paris Jones is the young man you see there. He's gone, number one, gets six, 28 to nothing, near the end of the first, but the Coyotes aren't done in the first. Another drive going on, Chad Samuels launches one up to Andre the Giant Jones. That in 34 to nothing, and the Giants going to be at it again. The two-point conversion, they're going to line it. They're already at 34 nothing, but they want to work on that offense a bit more. Jones goes to the far left. He punches it in. 36 nothing at that point. Coyotes, they're moving on with the 49 to six. Let's head back over to Spencer. Well, Glen Lake's football program has seen a great return to glory the past few years under head coach Jerry Andrews. Lakers got their first playoff win since 2001 last fall. Now looking for more. Starting this year out with Lakeview. Fans fired up a little bit in the rain. They came out to support the Lakers in the first after a Glen Lake muff punt. Wildcats take advantage. John Torres from a yard out. And it's 7-zip Lakeview early. Stay in the first. The Wildcats with it. But Glen Lake playing some great team defense. Check this out. Pass complete to the flats. Bryson Jackson slows him up. Travis Wilcher with the strip, Ooh. and Carter Lee with the recovery, and the Lakers are in business. Looking to turn defense into offense, they give it to the young man who's been doing this stuff all year long, Trevor Apsey. Finds the cutback lane, then finds the end zone from 35 yards out. PAT no good, 6-7 Wildcats at that point. 
Go to the second. Lakers still trailing, but back with the rock. Carter Lee fakes the dive up the middle and takes it himself for 16 yards, and he's in for six. Lakers take the 14-0 lead. The two-point conversion was good. Then right before the half, Lakeview would get six right back. It's the Wildcat QB, Nate Sherlow, calling his own number this time. Miss PAT, 14-13 at the half. Lakers would add a score late in the fourth to put it on ice, and they're moving on. Final score, 21-13 to at home. Lake City, a big sleeper team in Division 7, creeping up on people, hosting Whitmore Prescott tonight. The Cardinals, Whitmore Prescott trailing on the road early by a score. And then Jens, Jens Gillings connects with Jose Rodriguez for a 30-yard TD pass. The Miss PAT Trojans up 7-6. Then it's Drew Marion, who's been doing this all year long, finds Ooh. Dylan Allen for a nice grab, takes a shot over the middle. The drive would end in an interception. Gillings back with it, takes it himself for a 7-yard QB keeper. Cardinals up 12-7 with two minutes to go in the it's half. A little dance. It was. It was nice. Drew Marion connects with little brother Lucas Marion. He's brought down at the one-yard line, and then big brother takes it from there. Drew Marion scores it. It was 14-12 at the half. The Trojans go out. They go on to win this one 35-20. They're moving on to the district final. Whittemore Prescott, a tough team to eliminate in the playoffs. Lake City off to a good start. Traverse City West. It's only been playing football for 16 seasons. Well, they've been scheduled against Rockford seven times in the playoffs. That's, uh, that's pretty remarkable. The Rams, even more remarkable, have been victorious every time. Even bigger challenge for the Titans tonight. They're taking the field after a group of players were suspended for violating team rules. West held them to just a field goal at halftime, though. So they're playing very strong against this Rams offense, and this is one of the best teams in Division I. So do the math, they're one of the best teams in the entire state. So West hanging tough with this Rams squad. Late third though, Chase Hankins for Rockford to Josh Olson. This is a beautiful drive that's gonna keep the Rams momentum going down to the 20 as you see there. And then Tyler Bradfield, that's not Tyler Bradfield in the hood. That's probably his brother or maybe his sister watching from the stands. Bradfield is the one who's zooming past the Titan defense here. He gets in the black paint. 10 to nothing Rams at that point. Their fans are very into it. Later, Darren Vaughn is going to fake out pretty much everybody. Defense cameraman, but he got the score. 19 to nothing. Rockford moving on, giving West their eighth straight loss to them in the playoffs. Well, let's talk about another Traverse City team, the Gladiators of St. Francis. Heading up north, eight hours to the West Iron River, Iron County, uh, the far west UP, basically. After a scoreless first half, that had both teams flexing their defense and and the muscles. We head in the third quarter. Wycon QB Andrew Peterson. Screen pass to Ryan Rogers, but watch closely. The ref didn't like that one. Throws the flag, drive stall. So later, Peterson again finds a hole on the keeper, and he's off to those good old races. 50 yards total. Tough to catch the young man. Finally brought down, though. That sets up, guess who? Peterson again. Another keeper. He finds a good hole in that gladiator defense, and that's enough for a score. West Iron County looking great on their home turf, but the Glads aren't done yet. QB Joe Staszynski is going to do a little running himself. A good scramble here. It runs about 60 yards before finally getting pushed out, but you see the final score there. St. Francis put up seven. Not enough to get the win on the road. 21-7. They're eliminated this evening.